Here's a graph you've seen countless times. This is a time series of global mean surface temperatures, in this case from the Berkeley Earth Project from 1880 to 2020. Temperatures are plotted as departures in degrees Celsius from the average value of the mid-20th century. Although it's clear there is an upward trend, at least since 1970, this is not a great way to present and communicate climate change, in my opinion. For audiences less familiar with climate science or those prone to skepticism, this graph tends to raise more questions than it resolves. For example, we can artificially enhance the slope by compressing the x-axis, or diminish modern warming by stretching it out. Worse, we can isolate intervals with a flat or negative slope, whether by analyzing the data piecewise or subconsciously with our eyes. Sure, there's warming in this graph, but there's also cooling, right? So will this trend continue, or is it the first half of yet another cycle? And why isn't every year progressively warmer if CO2 has steadily increased since the 50s? Don't get me wrong, these visual tricks are an example of cherry picking. And they are just that, visual tricks with no meaningful impact on how a researcher would interpret the data. However, they do reflect how most people think, including many scientists. Humans have a tendency to find patterns that don't exist and explain away patterns that do. The fact that we can appear to make or break our case by how we scale the graph can lead people mistakenly to dismiss its relevance altogether. It can also erode trust in the scientific community. To make matters worse, a graph like this can lead the audience to believe erroneously that we identify climate change simply by drawing linear regressions, which, for all they know, we begin arbitrarily at whatever point best supports our hypothesis. This misunderstanding has led to numerous memes that describe pauses in global warming, these memes are persuasive because most people genuinely don't know how to define climate, let alone climate change. So, let's find a better way first by exploring what this graph leaves out. In light blue, I've increased the data resolution to daily observations, which show that for any given year, temperature fluctuates within about a 2 degree window around the long-term signal. This noise in the time series is related to dynamical processes that move heat around the globe as well as between the boundary layer, where we actually measure surface temperature, and other reservoirs such as the ocean, cryosphere, land, and upper atmosphere. Let's focus in on a single year, 1950, that's a good one. The best way to characterize the variance in a single parameter, such as surface temperature, is to present the frequency of individual values. In other words, let's build a histogram of surface temperature one day at a time. For example, January 1st of 1950 was a half a degree below normal for that day. So we add that day to the lower panel at minus 0.5 on the x-axis. January 2nd had the same temperature, so that bar just doubled in size. As we continue this exercise, we can further define the histogram by a probability density function, or PDF, that approximates the likelihood that any given value will occur during the year. The more data we include, the smoother the curve becomes, and the more it resembles a normal distribution, albeit skewed, with most data grouping near the center. We can now see that very few days plot more than one degree from the annual average for 1950. The probability, given by the area below the curve, left of negative one or right of positive one, is therefore small, less than 5%. Of course, not every year has the same variance. Some years, like 1998, had bigger fluctuations due to strong shifts in large-scale weather patterns. Other years, like 2020, begin warmer than average but end colder than average because they are characterized by a shift from El Niño to the La Niña phase of the Southern Oscillation. Whatever the case, the full variance of individual years is captured by the PDF built from daily observations. So, let's return to our time series of average annual temperature, but this time, we will simultaneously plot the probability function for each year. The year 1880 was more than a half a degree colder than the 20th century average, but based on the PDF, the warmest five days of that year plot slightly above zero. After plotting the next 10 years, we find that although each year is different, the PDFs largely overlap, meaning there was little change in the probability of experiencing a given temperature from 1880 to 1890. But then we get to 1920, where the median temperature is comparable to what used to be a warm day 30 years prior. By 1940, it's apparent the climatic shift is robust there is a distinct change in the probability distribution of daily temperatures. This warming was driven by several factors, natural recovery from the so-called Little Ice Age, increased solar radiation, retreat of Arctic sea ice, and both natural and anthropogenic increases in key greenhouse gases. From 1940 to 1970, there is little change in the median temperature, but that's not the same as an absence of warming. Here, the climatic shift is expressed by an increase in the temperature variance. In other words, the PDFs haven't really shifted left or right, but they have become shorter with wider tails that characterize the probability of extreme temperatures in both directions. Following 1980, a clear trend emerges, both in the variance and range of daily temperatures. The PDFs are shorter, wider, and well shifted to the right. It's around this time that we see increased risks of warm season extremes from forest fires to category four and five tropical storms. 
By 2020, the coldest days of the year are now warmer than the warmest days at the beginning of last century. The detection of climate change is thus more than a matter of drawing regression lines through a time series. It is a measure of shifts in the probability distribution of a variable, whether temperature, precipitation, humidity, drought, ice extent, or any other metric of the climate system. If we repeat this exercise but plot PDFs for each decade, the recent departure from 20th century climate is even clearer. The last four decades are statistically distinct from those preceding. Since climate is defined as the average conditions over a 20 to 30 year period, a climatology or climate normal is defined by the probability distribution over 30 year intervals. So, by plotting subsequent climatologies, we can see that the last two are distinct in both in variance and range, and the shift in median temperature has been approximately 1 degree Celsius, which translates to about 0.3 degrees per decade since 1975. And that is how we detect and quantify climate change, not year-to-year -year changes in temperature, but long-term shifts in the climate normal.